After years of being the second best in the long-standing rivalry, I can't believe BMW have finally done it. They have massacred the Mercedes EQS and S-Class with the seventh generation of this new 7 Series. It is really that good. And if you like a bit of symmetry, this is the seventh generation of what is codenamed the G70 7 Series, AKA the i7. And with that nice bit of symmetry comes the biggest change to ever happen to 7 Series. And that is of course the fully electric version known as the i7 to be sold alongside plug-in hybrids and combustion versions in the exact same design, which is the right way to do it. Design is one of the areas where it massacres certainly the EQS and what are the other areas where I'm going to show you every single bit in terms of the gorgeous details that are around this car and there are a plethora of them. This thing gives you wow factor the moment you step inside of it. Maybe not the outside and that's the one thing that we're going to have a moan about. And then when you drive this car you really appreciate what lies under the skin in terms of how they've made this a car that's really encroaching on even Rolls-Royce in terms of being an absolutely mind-blowing luxury boat, essentially. Especially with the ultimate package on our car today, which is 28K, but possibly 28K really well spent if you want the best that a luxury car has to offer. This car is full of cool party tricks, and I can't wait to show you all of them, this one being my favorite one. So let's dive in now and check out the new seventh generation of seven series in this i7 xDrive 60. So guys, today's episode of RBR is once again kindly sponsored by Carly Connected Car Adapter. This is the one car related device that I own that has been borrowed the most by my friends and family, simply because it's so useful in diagnosing and sometimes even fixing problems that your car has. And it's so easy to do. All you do is plug in this little Carly Connected device into your car's OBD port. So this little dongle then along with the app acts almost like a virtual workshop for you. You can scan your car, it will scan all the car systems for issues. If you have warning lights up and they can be safely cleared, you can clear them. If you need diagnosis of a current problem, the dongle is smart enough to give you the information that you would get at your local workshop as well, saving you money. The other good thing is that you get the coding feature as well, where you can unlock or change the behavior of your car to suit you. For example, disabling start-stop feature if you hate it permanently. Little things like that, that will customize the car to your liking. It's been so useful over the last few years. It's helped me, it's helped so many of my friends as well. You absolutely just must have one of these around. And if you're an RBR viewer, of course, I've got a great code for you. Just use the code RBR23 and you'll get 15 percent off one of these dongles it's a great deal you need to have one around absolutely recommend it huge thanks to carly for sponsoring today's video let's get back to the car so my friends bmw have taken a totally different approach to electrification in terms of design compared to their rivals so for example like with the i4 the electric version looks just like the 4 series and with the more recently announced 5 series and i5 both look identical up to the point that you don't even see the exhaust tips in the combustion version. So BMW are saying to you that you can choose the type of propulsion you want without sacrificing on design. So you don't need to have an aerodynamic piece of soap just to have an electric car. The same is true of the 7 Series. You don't sacrifice design to choose your powertrain, be it electric, plug-in or combustion. But then you do kind of sacrifice design because, let's face it, let's look at the design. BMW's head of design calls it a monolithic approach to design. What is a monolith? Well, that is a monolith. So yeah, I guess he's kind of right. Because it is literally a slab of straight cut stone. There is a singular line that goes down the side. It's blocky at the front. It's literally like it is a piece of stone. If anything, it really, really does remind you of a Rolls Royce. And I know so many of us have said that from the day, from the first day that we saw it. And it is true. You know, the upright front grille, the square proportions, long bonnet, um, reduced greenhouse, wide shoulders, but, you know, no arches, so to speak. It's just one line. I mean, it's, it's a tough one. There's, there's no really handsome angle of it, no matter where I try to take the B-roll from. And in that sense, it's kind of ugly, particularly when you look at it in the lens of a previous 7 Series, which were 
always more towards sports sedan. This is no part sports sedan, like, like perhaps you would liken the S-Class to the current one, which it really is. And it's a 100% luxury barge Rolls-Royce cousin. That describes this perfectly. Now, when compared to the predecessor, the predecessor introduced us to what I called back then the George Foreman grill, which we're now a bit more used to. This is, of course, available now in what they call iconic glow, so it will glow around the edges, uh, much like the new 5 Series R car today it doesn't have that, perhaps, thankfully. But it has grown in size compared to the predecessor in terms of length, wheelbase, width, height. It's all a little bit larger, as you would expect as things happen over time in car manufacturers. And then the details that really make it upper level BMW that you'll see shared with things like X7 and XM, which are the slim lights, first of all. Now these are actually quite gorgeous and you get matrix LED headlights as standard on seven, or you can get the upgraded crystal ones, which actually have Swarovski crystals embedded within the lights in like an L shape. They're massive, as you can see here. And they give this really lovely kind of welcome dance that they do that kind of set them apart. It looks amazing at night in particular, but you do see it a little bit during the day. Then you've got your main BMW LED large beams at the bottom, which are of course adaptive and they sit within the bodywork, almost kind of hidden. Again, like you've seen in XM and like you've seen in X7. It's a, it's a difficult look to get used to, but I'm kind of getting around to that element. I'm just not sure about the rest of the body. We've got flush fitted side windows with a strange kind of graphic on the furthest window on the back, which matches kind of the taillights. I'm not sure about that. And then you check out the rear and that's a bit more traditional, really slim lights though for what is a really blocky rear end but I actually don't mind the rear that much. My issue with it is, is just how tall the car always looks. Again, really looking so much like a Rolls Royce in that regard. I think maybe that's, that is what they're going for because even the head of design mentioned, it does look like a Rolls. The door handles, of course, aerodynamically optimized. They're very busy though, a lot of sensors, there's lights within them. They're okay, they're decent. Um, the reason that they've got all those sensors is because of the other party trick, which is the full door automation. I've set it to the key, which is cool. You can do it on the app, you can do it on the inside. You can decide how many doors. And I will show you that right now. So one of my absolutely favorite things on this car are the automatic doors. And I've set the automatic doors to my shortcut on the vehicle key here. So if I hold this now, you see all of the doors of the car open. You can set that in the system to whichever doors you want. And then similarly, this will close all of the doors as well. And that's such a cool thing for a luxury car to have that embedded. And the fact that you can do it on the key or on your app, etc., is really, really cool. Such a thing for a, a, like a prime luxury car, right? Something like a Rolls Royce, because we all know rich people, bloody lazy bastards, aren't they? So why would they want to pull a door handle or shut one? Makes total sense to me. And the other thing that's cool is that will work per door without the use of a key, without the use of an app as well. You can simply press the button and then the door will open for you, similarly on the rear as well. So for example, I can hop inside here, then all I need to do is press the door button and the door will close. And inside the car, you have the option of either pressing that door button to release it, or you've got a manual button at the bottom, which is hidden. And the same option in the rear as well. Nice and convenient. Now, the only thing you'll see that will distinguish the electric car from the plug-in or the combustion is the BMW iBlue highlights, which come around each badge, wherever they are in the car, be it on your exterior badges or your interior badges. And you do get exhaust tips in the higher level combustion version or the M versions of the 7 Series as well. Other than that, you cannot tell this car apart, but there are three different design trims on the outside. The first one is called Excellence, which is kind of a more elegant version, I guess, or it feels a bit more electric, electric car design to me. So that is your initial option. Then you get M Sport, which is a lot more BMW M, particularly with our front fender. And then M Sport Pro, which adds a, a tiny bit more aggression to that. And of course, you've got a host of different wheels designs available as well. And the other side of it is, this car is really spec dependent. BMW UK have done a good job here with the Tanzanite spec with a gorgeous, gorgeous interior. However, if you end up going for one of the two-tone looks, it can either look 
decent or incredibly garish and just make the whole proportions even worse as if you thought that wasn't possible but it really is so you do have to be careful when you are specking this car it's not eqs ugly but it can get there pretty bloody fast now in terms of tech the car is built on bmw's Klar platform or a modified version of it which has got a mix of materials to make it nice and rigid and lightweight and that's built at the dingolfing plant where the 7 series has historically been done but in a updated factory where the electric combustion plugins are all being built together in a new age factory now in terms of suspension which is really the most important part of a luxury car in this segment it comes as standard with two axle air suspension which is great because it means the standard car is going to behave really well on roads as well beyond that you can get what they call integral steering which is basically rear wheel steer up to 3.5 degrees something i want to talk to you guys about because i found it a little bit weird and beyond that you can get an executive pack which has 48 volt anti-roll stabilization essentially and a bit more in terms of adaptive damping which our car today actually has so we can see the best of what the 7 has to offer now in terms of the electrical element, we have got their latest technology in this car. So we've got their fifth generation of electric motor, one in the front and one on the rear. They link up to a 101 kilowatt battery. And the first version of the car you get is the X-Drive 50. This has got around about 450 brake horsepower, which is quite decent. Zero to 16 in around five seconds. And it's priced up, starting price in the UK at least, of around about 102K, which is interesting because when you look at the rival EQS, for example, that is a whole 100 horsepower slower, much slower to 60 and the exact same price, which is pretty pathetic. So BMW, again, kicking ass in that regard. Then the one that we have today, which is the X-Drive 60. Now we've got 540 odd brake horsepower, a much more respectable zero to 60 or five odd seconds. Yes, an increased price slightly, but no competitor to really match this. Range is good as well. I saw around about 350 when this car was delivered to me with 95% um, in terms of charge, which is really, really good. So I was impressed by that. The only EQS you can get is the EQS 53, but that's a ridiculous 160,000 pounds. And BMW have got a check for that as well in the M70 with 659 brake horsepower, which by the way is one more than the EQS 53. So they've taken bragging rights on that as well. And of course, that's a beast in terms of performance with over a thousand Newton meters, et cetera. Do you really need that? I doubt you do, but it's there because they want to be competitive. One little tidbit I didn't like about this car, even though it's electric, is I can actually open the hood. And I like that because I hate electric cars when you get them and like, you can't. And in here you've got like this BMW i, I don't know, engine cover, which is massive, but it's nice, it's familiar to me you know I like that you guys like it I like it now if electric isn't your thing don't worry we have plugins for example one of the first ones which is the e-drive 50 comes with 490 brake horsepower and a starting price again of around about a hundred thousand which is quite decent and if you're in the USA and China and certain parts of Europe you will be lucky enough to get a mild 48 volt hybrid car which is basically pure combustion in both their brilliant six cylinder and in a diesel as well. You lucky sods, you don't know how good you have it. So guys, those are the variants you can get. I think price-wise, very competitive versus the rivals, though you can go crazy. And this car is the crazy version. It is the ultimate package version of our X-Drive 60. Ultimate package costs 28,000 pounds, but it does elevate this car to a level where you can say that you're probably better off than a Rolls-Royce and a Maybach. That's seriously how good the Ultimate Package makes this in terms of theatricality. In addition to that, we have also got a 6,000 pound Grand Lusso interior, which I think is absolutely gonna blow you away. FYI, this element never gets old. I just closed the door by pushing the brake button. It's brilliant. I love the automatic doors in this car. It is such a talking point. So guys, welcome to the new interior of the 7 Series. It is a stunning place to be, one of the best luxury interiors in this segment that I've had a chance to sit in. The first thing is when you get in, there are some just some wow moments. And a lot of it is thanks to what I call the soul of the car, which is this crystal light bar, which is the interactive bar that goes across the front of the car. This is something that the 5 Series has inherited to great effect as well. 
And what this does is, is animate everything that's going on with the car, whether that's the ambiance that you're trying to portray, whether that's the driving modes itself, whether it's sporty or relaxing, or whether that's like warnings or stuff that's going on on the outside or the inside of the car. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous thing. And the effect of it is best shown at nighttime. So I wanna show you what it looks like when we head into the My Modes, which is how you choose A, the ambiance and B, your driving modes within the new generation of BMW cars. So you go into here and for example, if we move from our normal setting, which is personal into sport, then you'll see it suddenly turn into BMW M colors and that's in terms of the light bar, all the ambient lighting around the car, your 12 inch front screen as well. And indeed the suspension and the drive settings when you're driving, everything changes. And at night it looks amazing. When you see the lights change and the whole character of the car changes, your drive select unit here in the middle, that changes with the ambient lighting as well. And it all looks amazing. And then we go into say another mode, we'll go into efficient and efficient turns predictably into a greenish bluish tone and your car becomes obviously more efficient in terms of its driving, a bit more comfortable. Then we go into one that I really like, which is expressive. This gives me a massage and has a lovely blue and yellow theme going on around it. And then you'll notice that the Bowers and Wilkins speakers also have ambient lighting within there as well. It's an amazing speaker system, by the way, with 38 tweeters, we've got speakers within our seats as well and optional exciters within the seats. So when you're listening to music, or as you'll see later when you're watching a film in the car, you get an additional four dimensional experience thanks to this optional sound system. So, expressive is really cool. I like it, I like the way it looks during the day and in the night. We've got relax, which then calms everything down and it closes all your blinds and gives you a nice environment inside the car. Theater's interesting because it gives you this welcome music like you're in a cinema, right? And this is for the rear occupants to then sit in you get this cinematic kind of intro and it gives you all the blinds closed and you sit down and you watch a film in the back, which is cool. But the one that I really loved was the one that looks the weirdest and sounds the weirdest, called Digital Art. Everything goes purple, but then you get the benefit of the amazing Sky Lounge. And I must show you this. The Sky Lounge is one of the coolest panoramic roofs I've ever seen. It's a full glass roof on the top, but within it sits ambient lighting within these lines and you can see that it looks incredible at night, not that visible during the day, but at nighttime adds a layer of ambience to the car that I've not seen anywhere else. Switch through the modes, for example, going to BMW M mode and you see that those lights change. Again, whatever mode you're in, go into expressive, etc., And it just adds such an amazing view, particularly from the rear. I think it's more for the rear passengers, this. But I love that element. And this is something, again, that you get within the ultimate package. And that initial thing that you get within the car when my kids first sat in this, they were amazed. And the reaction was so extreme, I had to quickly record their reaction, which I want to share with you now. Look, there's a TV. Dad, oh can, we, Dad can we keep it? Do you love it? Yes. Is it for us? Are you shocked? Yes. Dad, I got one as well. I want it. Now, bear in mind, these are two boys who see a lot of press cars coming in, ranging from insane track cars to really you know, luxurious things. And for them to have that reaction when they got in here, it kind of blew my mind because they're so kind of used to it. I know it sounds bad, but it's true. And same for me, you know, I'm used to these things, but really sitting in this car, all of this wowed me. And that's so important, I think, for a luxury car of this segment to give passengers, not just in the front, but in the rear, that wow, that one second wow factor as soon as you get in. And the 7 Series has it in spades, not just with this element with your interactive bar, but also then with the iconic sounds when you're driving and you get all these varied sounds depending on driving mode. Again, they were going crazy over that and absolutely loved it. And the other thing that they loved was how comfortable and spacious the rear is. And of course, the theater screen. Again, wow factor, which I'll get onto in a minute. So all of that, initially when you get in the car, there's a lot of wow. The other great thing about the 70s interior is how it kind of melds what we love about old traditional analog interiors, like a really nice and sculptured front dashboard, a nice traditional center console, and it melds it with the digital side. So you've got your 12 inch screen, which is so typical of BMWs now, 
I don't mind the fact that they all use them because now I just see this as a tool for a purpose and everything else surrounding it is more important. You've got a fantastic BMW M redesigned steering wheel that I'll get onto later. I'll show you a first person view. You've got your drive unit here, which has been redesigned, which is fantastic because you get still get use of the iDrive controller. So if you don't want to be tapping around and doing unsafe stuff with touchscreens, I don't like having touchscreen only cars. You still have the ability to use the iDrive controller for everything here. And that is so safe and it's so useful, particularly when you're driving. And I love the fact that BMW are doing that. So round of applause, standing ovation for BMW for maintaining that because that's just really safe. So that's really great. That's nice and safe. But the cool thing is if you're using touch, the system is so much responsive than it is, for example, in my three series. And that's because of an updated processor. So using all the apps here is super quick. You don't get any lag at all. Apple CarPlay is completely full screen and Android Auto, as you can imagine, which is really nice looking. You can set your shortcuts that you use frequently in a swipe down menu at the top, and that replaces kind of when you used to have the numbers down here. So that's nice. And then you've got these hidden vents within our interaction bar light, along with a few other hidden things that I'll show you from first person view. But it's really cool because you can't actually see where the vents are, but you can swipe to open and close them. And it's all done in a really minimalistic way but it's quite effective and quite useful as well. Climate menu, a little bit scary. There's like a thousand things in there, but it's quite extensive and you do get used to it over time. And then we come to the other thing. That's my favorite thing on this interior. And that is the seats. The seats are incredibly comfortable, so well cushioned. The cushioning is amazing. They're bigger in terms of surface area versus the outgoing model significantly. And just the shape of them, when you see them, you see like this separate, top section and your headrest with the carbon fiber and just how wide and well cushioned they are and then the adjustability when we go within the system here and you've got nine levels of massage for example so we've got everything from back massage shoulder lumbar whole body activation pelvic activation I mean what smacks of luxury car more than an ass massage you got an ass massage in the 7 series fantastic back training, pressure point massage, there's loads in there. And then of course the lumbar and how adjustable all of it is, which is great. You've got seat climate control. So you've got ventilated seats and heated seats as you would expect as well. All of that is great. The seats are just, just so, so comfortable. They're like sitting on your sofa at home, which is exactly what you want from a car of this segment. And again, really encroaching on, on cars from a higher echelon like your Rolls Royce. I always love showing first person view, but I think it's even more important in a car like the 7, where there are genuinely some really cool features to show from the driver's perspective. Stuff like, you know, the self-opening doors, which is great. But more in this car, it's actually the ambience of the interior. So leveled up uh, in every way, as you saw. So this is kind of your driver's view. I love the steering wheel. I think this is fantastic. It's a great upgrade over the previous one, which is also in cars like my M3. I like the shape of this. It's more sporting. It's really flat bottomed. You've got a really nice and strong sport design on the bottom spoke here, which is of course, this is the M spoke. So I really like that. Your controls on the sides are redesigned. They're kind of a bit more minimalistic. They've taken a little bit of getting used to, but they're not bad. So on this side, you've got all of your cruise control and distance control, self-driving element on these and over here, You've got your menu control system for your driver zone and your phone, your music, et cetera, et cetera. So it's actually quite easy to use. For example, if we want to change up content and layout within here, it's very easy, just a few clicks and you can change everything both on your driver zone here and then in the heads up. And I'll show you that in a second. The other cool thing in the i7 is this boost button here, which I will show in the drive what it does. Essentially gives you 10 seconds of the strongest drive setting and the most dynamic suspension setting, which is really cool. Other than that, this living light bar within the car really acts almost like as the soul of the car, which is great. You know, when you're doing whatever you're doing in the car, whether it's like, you know, using the hazard lights, you get a phone call that happens as well. You open the door and there's a car coming from behind. This entire area flashes red as well to warn you. And then of course my favorite party trick, which I'll keep showing, which is going into your my modes and for example we choose sport and the way the entire ambiance of the interior changes into something more bmw m or 
we can go into efficient and once again we change into something totally totally different and i love all of that i love how both the light bar and the screens and the ambient lighting really act as the personality of the vehicle telling you what's going on what mode you're in this thing i love and particularly in a luxury car it gives you a lot of ambience which is great this part of your center console very much angled towards the driver as historically traditional with bmw cars which is nice we have a massive lack of buttons here right we haven't even got a handle to open our glove compartment there instead there's this little button here watch and that pops it open so they've tried to kind of make things quite minimalist as you saw we've got the vents in here which open and close like that and then you can choose how much they're open with this little toggle at the bottom it's nice and hidden you can't even see where the vents are but they work quite well particularly on a warm day like this down here you've got your charging mat we've got two cup holders nicely hidden as well and they'll have some ambient light in there which looks fantastic at night you've got the redesigned drive controller which again it's got a nice bit of ambient lighting, particularly at night, depending on what mode you're in. When it's got the M colors, it looks fantastic. We've got the optional crystal uh, gear selector here and the iDrive unit controller, which again, very, very nice actually in practice. I don't like that because it's too small. I'd like a proper gear stick, even though this is an iCar. I don't think that's an excuse for having a boring looking gear selector. One thing you'll find everywhere on this car and in the new 5 Series are burger menus. You see these, these three lines here, this is what's called a burger menu in UI design language. So when you press that, it takes you into then a further menu to do with that thing. So I just click the drive settings one, you see we've gone to driving assistance, drive train this chassis. You'll find that same burger menu, for example, on the seats here, you tap that and then it goes into all of your seat settings. If I tap the window one here, then it takes us into doors and windows, for example. It's actually quite a clever way of reducing buttons and making the stuff within your UI more accessible because sometimes it's a nightmare to find these things. But because of the burger menu system, you have a fighting chance to try and find out where the settings for things are in the car, which is actually a good way of doing it, I think. Apart from that, the fit and finish of the 7 Series is incredible, even from the driver's perspective. You know, you've got the Bowers and Wilkins crystal speakers hidden within there, that light bar, the grill even of the speakers looking fantastic. We've got the carbon fiber with the silver inlay, which looks great. I'm a big fan of the door cards as well. Nice and cushioned, really, really nicely trimmed here. As you can see, just like the seats, then you've got a more modern looking kind of window control area, which is nicely done. The light bar, I just love. And then look, you've got your seat options embedded within here, nicely within the crystal, just like your vents and your light controls are nicely embedded within there as well. It's all seamless. Then you've got the crystal, again, used for your seats, which I really like. Again, it all looks really, really classy. The structure of that front dashboard, I think, is really nice. It's modern, but it's still like a, a nice classical shaped dashboard as well. You've got your strong center console, the leather, the merino leather here, fantastic. And you know I'm a big fan of the seats. Absolutely love the shape and the size of them. So, so comfortable. We have a single tap and you can close all of the blinds as well. And that works great on a sunny day like this or when you want to enjoy the theater screen. And so much theater back there, literally theater. It's really, really good in here, and it's just a lot more eventful than the Rivals, frankly speaking. It feels like you're sitting in a car from the future. That's just your front. You jump in the rear as well, and it's just a really special place to be. Same party trick in the rear, of course. It doesn't get old. I love it. I love it. So the rear, really nice um, in the 7 Series. The seats, first of all, really, really comfortable. In our ultimate package and in your rear comfort package, you get this seat rest on the seat that's behind the front passenger seat, which is uninterrupted. And now when we press the reclining option on our rear seat behind the passenger, you can see our front seat begins to go forward. And now our rear seat will begin to recline. You can see there's no gap there on your, on your uh, leg rest. That looks really cool. And look, that is going to be a cool place to sit right so how's that as a place to chill inside the back of the 7 series this is like my back levels of luxury and refinement isn't it the amount of airiness i have here right now 
is an, it's the next level. The comfort of the seats, you know, me being the boss with the little screen here, theater screen, ambience of the uh, interactive bar. This is, this is why I'm saying this is elevated this car a few generations ahead. It's like you're sitting in a BMW car from the future, but kind of done right, but at least, you know, on the inside. And this is why it just so wholly dominates easily the EQS. And, you know, S-Class has a lot to worry about when it comes to 7 seats. Of course, you've got your really soft pillows in here. We've got blinds which are closed, which are nice on a day like this and great for this thing. Oh yes, of course, I forgot about this. So you've got these five inch screens embedded within your door card here, where you can control a lot of things in the car. So if we swipe to unlock here, you can see initially we've got our seat adjustment. This I think is a bit clunky. Okay, because you kind of have to choose each section and then, you know, you can move it a little bit. Like for example, if I go in here and that's moving my front seat forward and back. I prefer just like we have the crystal switches over there, just to have a crystal switch over here. I don't know why. I don't want to go into here and do all of that. That's annoying. Um, it's good for massaging though. So we can put on all our massaging, etc. seat climate control. That's all great. Apart from that, of course, you've got the television. I'll get onto that in a second. You've got telephone. We've got my modes that we can select from the back of the car. I like doing that. So for example, if we go into expressive, there you go. You're the boss in the back of the seven series as it should be. Indeed, we've got control over our blinds and we can choose which ones we do. So we've done that one now we Can choose the other one here. I'll pop that up. And indeed the one behind good for a day like this and indeed even control over our roof one as well and you can do that by swiping so that's pretty cool i think it's a better thing than having like an ipad here or a screen here i don't know how well it'll age but for this day and age it kind of makes sense right now let's get our theater screen down and then when the kids saw this they just screamed and that's you know it's one of the uh demographics kind of aiming for right to wow the children when they're sitting in the back it's a massive like 38 inch something screen. Of course, you can choose different aspect ratios within there as well. Amazon Fire TV is pre-installed. There's a HDMI connection as well. So presumably you can plug in like your own player or like consoles, etc. as well. Um, it's a nice place to be in with the blinds closed front and rear, and then your tweeters within the seat and that whole Bauer and Wilkin sound system. It's gonna be a pretty cool place to kind of enjoy some content on a longer drive. And for me, it's all about the wow factor of this element. I think it's so cool. As you can see, get rid of the screen, the blinds go as well. Apart from that, we've got like USB-C within our front seats, both of here for us to charge in. We've got two zone climate control as standard within this. The space view cup holder is quite cool with this massive central. Again, this is kind of like that crystal theme covering around here. Again, a smartphone wireless charger here, which is probably a good way to do it loads of storage as you'd imagine and more USB C's within here or you can simply just hold this away and you've got a nice middle bench as well. In terms of your my modes of course everything changes within your screens in front as well in terms of the design and then in terms of your driver zone so much more configurable than it used to be in the past really catching up with rivals like Mercedes. Now in my modes you've got all these different modes for example let's go into the one that you guys are going to love the most which is sport and you head into the driver zone. How cool does that look initially? And all you need to do, you go into that widget there, you can see the gear icon, and that brings up this, where you can then choose the content on display. So you get quite a range of different things. Augmented reality is cool. This works while you're driving as well. So it's the front camera, you've got your navigation, sport display, music, etc. But it's not just that, you can also choose what you see in your head up. And again, the head up is something I'll show you while we're driving. Let's go back into my modes and then say, for example, go into personal. Now you'll see when we go into here, there's a further option of how you display the layout of what you're seeing here. So let's change the content for a second to something like our sport display. Then you can change the layout of what you see here to a number of different ones. So you first, you've got this one, you've got like a wider version, You've got a completely different style here as well. And then you can choose what you have within those. And the animation is done quite nicely. It's kind of seamless. And like I said, that front screen changes depending on what mode you're in. So let's go into sport and you see it changes. We go back into my modes, efficient. You get a different one 
expressive gives you a different one as well relax and then finally digital art each one giving you a totally different look for your drivers end, and again that customizability which is superb now we need to turn the car on so we will hit the start button here and you get that typical BMW startup sound, Hans Zimmer, iconic sound, et cetera, et cetera. You guys know all about that. And that sound is nice because A, it tells you that the car is on, which for example, the Taycan, which is a very popular electric car, doesn't tell you when the car is on or off. Turn it off and you know the car is off. I think that's safe and I think that's cool uh, in both regards. If we go into sport mode as well, it actually has the exact same sound, but at least we have a start sound and an ending sound. What you do have though, is that per mode you have different sounds while driving. So I will show you that when we now go on the drive. So as we begin this drive of the 7 Series, we're going to talk about Hans Zimmer's iconic sounds. So that's the first thing that you really notice when driving this car, when we have iconic sounds on. We're going to go through each mode and I want to show you what each soundscape sounds like. And we're starting with the first one, which is personal. Right, now have a listen to this tune. It's very cinematic, as you'd imagine, from a man like him. So that's interesting. You get that essentially while accelerating. I can't really tell of anything while braking, um, but that sounds pretty decent. Then we'll go into efficient, which has a different soundscape altogether. This is all to do with efficiency, you know, driving in a bit more of a comfort manner. So you barely hear anything. There's like, in fact, I don't even think there's a soundscape on for efficiency. Then we head back into my modes and we choose expressive. This one's a little bit zany, I'm gonna pre-warn you, right? Listen to this. That reminds me of something. It's like, um, I can't remember what movie studio it was, but there, there was something that had an intro just like that where it would build up to crescendo. You know? It's a strange one, expressive. It doesn't sound like any type of vehicle to me, either sci-fi or otherwise. And it kind of bothers me. Um, there's this silent hum coming from the car. I'm gonna try with some minimal acceleration inputs. And then coming off the throttle, braking a little bit. There is some sound in braking. It does sound like the start of a Christopher Nolan film, doesn't it? Now let's get to the one we want to listen to, which is Sport. Everything changes to BMW M colors here, which is really cool. Now let's give this some beans. See, that's much more like it. That sounds like a vehicle to me, be it sci-fi or otherwise. Yeah, that sounds much more natural. That's a proper BMW sound. Let's try again from zero. Sounds like an aircraft, doesn't it? So I like that. I like the, um, the M type sound. That's, that's probably the best one of the lot. Right now we're in relax mode, as you can see, all relaxed. Oh, it's like someone's singing a hymn in the background. La. So as you'd expect, very kind of laid back, serene, you know, zen, whatever you want to call it. And then the final one is digital art which I'm quite a fan of as well. My second favorite after the M1. Again, it does sound very much like a sci-fi vehicle, which I think is what you're looking for in an electric sound. Yeah, I like that one. I like, I like digital art generally, actually. It's a bit zany, but it's very theatrical, particularly at night. Right guys, now let's get on to the main thing, which is comfort. Comfort of driving, comfort of sitting, comfort of suspension. This car has got, as standard, two axle air suspension, as we said. And in this particular car, we've got the executive pack, which has the 48 volt anti-roll and further damping, etc. So it's the best that a 7 Series is gonna get in terms of comfort, which is what we're really interested in today. How good of a luxury barge is this? And to start, we're gonna go on the crappiest road that I can find. It's a road full of bumps. It normally dishevels most cars. Let's see how the 7 does here. That's really impressive. I know this road. It is awful. And the car is unflappable. 
There were some vicious, vicious potholes on that road and we glided over them like they were nothing. And that's what I'm looking for in a luxury barge. The silence. Can you, can you perceive the silence in this car? And I'm driving at 60 miles an hour. There is not a single bit of road noise. I can't hear any wind noise, no tire noise. This thing is completely insulated to the outside world. Not only that, you don't perceive really the texture of the road either. So you're protected from all bumps in the road. You're protected from outside noise. It is what I deem hyper wafting. You're like, it's the ultimate form of waft because you're just slipping through the road, through the almost like your wheels aren't on the ground. You're just kind of floating through to your, just, to your destination. What better way is there to spend in a luxury car than that? It is genuinely that good. I think it's better than EQS in terms of that ability to kind of soak up um, the road. I think it feels to me certainly with this ultimate package a level higher in terms of comfort. So that is brilliant. I, I haven't had a chance to sit in the back, but I can't see it being any different. Um, that's not what today is about. We're all about driving it. Speaking of which, we've got this wonderful little paddle here, which says boost and a paddle on an electric car. It's an interesting application. You press this and you get 10 seconds where the suspension goes to the sportiest setting, as does the drivetrain. We're going to tap it now. Now watch, we're in personal and the theme in front will change to BMW M. We get this awesome boost logo and you get that full power for 10 seconds with a countdown. And it's so cool and so useful when you need that kick. It's almost like sports response mode or something like that in a Porsche where you know you get that countdown, you get the full power, and then it counts down until you've used it, and then boom, there you go. And it's it's really actually useful for taking advantage of opportunities while driving. And you know what? It looks damn cool as well. Now, if you want more sustained and continuous power, you go into sport, which keeps things, as it says, for pure driving pleasure. Sport is quick. I mean, it is very, very quick. Another 0 to 60 is around about five seconds. We got a good amount of horsepower, good amount of torque. And in daily driving, you feel it and you get that power immediately. Thanks to the nature of this being an EV, it never actually ever feels slow. Um, and that is an obvious thing to say, but it's something that I want to reassure you that just because this is, you know, a mid-level version of the i7, don't expect this to be slow. It feels very, very quick all the time, you know, just like um, Taycan and that ilk of car. Now, the other great thing when driving this car is the amount of tech that we have in the driver's end. For example, if we go into here and we choose the AR content as our main screen, this then uses the camera in front to display the road, display other cars. For example, right now it's detected the lanes, it's detected a car in front of us as well. Then one click of the steering wheel here and I can turn on the self-drive option and the car will begin to drive itself. And it will essentially assist you with that additional camera view in front to pick out things in the road. And it's actually quite useful in practice. Similarly, we can go into our heads up display. At the moment, I've chosen the sport display, which is like this arrow that glides through the air in the road with you and shows you how much power is being used. In heads up, you also get assisted view, you get navigation view as well. So a few good choices for you in there as well. Now the i7 has a few driving modes. One, we've got self-drive active at the moment, but if we pull down on our gear lever here again, you can see it goes to a mode called B. And with this, essentially what we have, if we turn off the self-driving, is one pedal driving. So it's fully recuperating. If I start pushing the pedal now, the car will accelerate. As soon as I take my foot off, it begins to brake quite excessively. And this element is quite good for traffic and it's something that you need to get used to, but it's one of the benefits of having the electric drivetrain. The other thing that we have in here is called adaptive driving mode. It can be turned off and essentially what it is, you'll see it written here, adaptive. And this is with all driving assistance off. As soon as we start to near either a car or a corner, the car will start to brake and recuperate by itself. And this is quite clever. Now it is a slightly nannying system, but I don't mind being nannied in a luxury car. For it to recuperate and restore its energy like it's doing now as we approach the roundabout without any driving assistance on is actually quite a smart and clever way for this car to behave. 
But if we do want to turn it off, it's as simple as going into our shortcut menu and choosing energy recovery low instead, and then the car will start to behave much more like a normal vehicle. I think if it was a pure M car, I'd be more against adaptive, but as it stands, I think it's quite clever and suits the nature of a luxury car like the i7. One weird thing is small maneuvers they weird you the hell out because the 3.5 degree rear wheel steering, it really like massively shortens the wheelbase of the car. So when you're driving along a long road like this, the car is so stable, you change lane at 70 miles an hour and the car is absolutely unflappable, right? But then as soon as you start making little maneuvers, it's turning way more than you expect. And it kind of feels like, like a London taxi or something along those lines or you know and it's a really strange feeling because then when you're driving dynamically you're having to kind of overcompensate for that extreme amount of, of, of steering and I've never felt it in such an extreme way in a car before and I don't think I like it that much and this is an optional thing in the 7 series I personally while it's been really useful for little maneuvers and stuff it just weirds me out as a driver and I think I would probably go without that's my personal opinion if you're talking turning circle, it's insanely good. See, turnings like that, so easy, and you never would have been able to do them in the past in the longer 7 Series. In this car, just absolutely effortless. If maneuverability is your thing, then absolutely go for it. It is so useful. But if you're like me and you're going to get super weirded out by like reverse parking and being trying to drive in a dynamic way in smaller corners, don't get it. What's nice is the anti-roll stabilization keeps the car really nice and flat, so you can be more dynamic with it. It's just that the feedback that you're getting while doing that is not particularly confidence inspiring. Dynamically, it's a really strange one because as soon as you start doing those small maneuvers then, I feel like the steering weirds you out and it almost turns a lot more than you're expecting. So it is good and it is quick but I just, it's not made for dynamics and I don't think you should be under any illusion that it is and it's not a car that I think that you're going to enjoy driving fast at least not in this iteration this is all about luxury I think they've really designed it in that way as well you look at the interior you look at the exterior you see how they keep mentioning you know Rolls Royce and all the rest of it this is a car made to be a pure luxury barge and that is why they focus so heavily on that element and I think it's the right move to make because they've got the sports car in the 5 Series. This really needs to take the fight to S-Class and the others, and it really is. One element I've loved about this car is setting on the driving assistance and just letting it drive itself. That's been great because it's such a comfortable car to do that in. Then more so at night time when you're able to put on the different my modes here and really enjoy the ambiance of the interior in different ways. It's less doable in the daytime, but at night when you've got a longer journey, putting on relax or expressive or digital art and seeing just how relaxing the interior becomes, put on the massage seats, this completely unconcerned with noises from outside or any bumps on the road and I want to chill out. And this is what the 7 Series does fantastically well, particularly an i7. Because it's so quiet due to the nature of the propulsion system, it is perfectly suited to be the ideal luxury car. Personally, I think this car eclipses the EQS in every way, mainly because of design, mainly because of the interior, and then just how comfortable it is to drive. It's on another level compared to that car. In terms of S-Class, things become a bit more difficult because that car is probably better looking on the outside, but on the inside, I just think the 7 Series has got it licked. It's just more eventful. All of this, particularly at different times of the day, particularly all the options available to give you different ambiance, and then the quietness of the interior. This car then encroaches on things like the Maybach, things like, heck, the Rolls-Royce, as we've kept saying. And that's where you get so much bang for buck. And it's really the ultimate package that takes it to that level. Removing the ultimate package and it's sitting at, what, 102k or something, that's a lot of bang for buck for what is, again, it's still going to be a fantastically quiet and comfortable and very, very stable and enjoyable luxury car. So I think this generation, 7 Series, has finally done it. It's ahead. Um, and I think the sales are reflecting that. They are selling tons of them at BMW dealerships. EQS, not so much. Um, so good on them. I think this is a really good start. I think 5 Series is going to 
encroach on this car because that car looks really good in terms of luxury. Let's see, it's exciting times ahead. I think the 7 is a great car. I'm not convinced on the looks, but if you want a Rolls-Royce type car from the people who make the Rolls-Royces, but probably just better, then you can't go wrong with the i7. So guys, I hope you've enjoyed this drive of the X-Drive 60. If you have, your support is hugely appreciated. Please do like and subscribe to RBR, and I will see you guys on the next one.